we're here at Bowl Expo, Bill, and I, I'm just amazed of all the different companies and everything going on here. It's I mean, it's hard to imagine some of these companies would even come to like a Bowl Expo, but they're out here with kind of unique products. I mean, we got our next gentleman here, Mark Miller, is he's got a very unique product that he's working with and kind of the renaissance guy of bowling, <laughs> uh, board of directors for the Bowling Writers Association of America, at least for a few more months that name. Got his own book coming out, uh, has worked with ABC, USBC. Busy what do we man. miss, Mark? <laughs> You've got most of it. Uh, I do some oh, the examiner. The examiner, uh, writer. Yep, uh, writer, examiner .com. I do some stuff for uh, Bowling Industry. Uh, I'm going to do some stuff for Bowlers Journal in their 100th next year. And uh, uh, little and the museum. I still do some work with the museum, helping them with their uh, history and their PR. So a little, little of everything. And in your spare time? <laughs> in my spare time, yeah. I get to see my family and sleep. Well, <laughs> so what a deal. Wherever that is. So tell us about the book we were yeah. talking about during the week. And it's kind of a different slant on on bowling and the real world. Yeah, it's uh, it's a book. A company out of England called Shire Books contacted the museum or the museum last year, and then the museum people gave them to me, uh, uh, supposedly knowing some stuff about the history. And and uh, so we've been working on it for a year. It's called Bowling: America's Greatest Game. It's scheduled to come out in the fall. Uh, last I heard, October. Uh, and what I do, it's only 64 pages, kind of a smaller format. But I took it from a standpoint of of America in the last couple hundred years and how. Uh, a number of the things that happen in America have affected bowling. Uh, for example, uh, when the uh, when a lot of the people emigrated to the U.S. from Europe, which is in the 1800s, that was the first big time when bowling grew. I mean, because we didn't have a lot here, but you know the Europeans brought their various games here. Then, uh, then you have uh, in later years uh, when, like when the ABC started, uh, you had a lot of different rules out there and a lot of different thinking. So you know that's how the ABC started with various things. Then you get into the early 1900s. You started getting women into the game, but back then women were not really uh, seen as, uh, you know, because the bowling had that image of backroom bar and stuff, and it's like, this is not a ladylike place. So, you know, again, but that was an American thing. You know, the challenges we had with minorities, uh, you know, minorities were not allowed in bowling uh, until 1950. But again, that was kind of the mood of the country at that time, bad, you know, uh, unfortunately. Now you go to prohibition, which was in the 1920 or the 1920s, early 1930s, and then once that got lifted, the beer era, the uh, Paps and the Budweisers and all the breweries started to uh, 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 sponsor bowling. Uh, the technology of uh, World War around World War II, which is when the automatic pin setters came in and got rid of the pin boys and other technological things. Uh, television in the 50s started growing big, and that was made for, for bowling. And then more so in the last 30 years, guys, is uh, uh, the changes we've seen in, the, in, in basically in American society that have dramatically affected uh, how many people go bowling. Uh, you know, we know that 9 million people went bowling in 1980. Uh, uh, league bowling. There are members of ABC and WIBC and at that time the Junior Association and now there's less than 2 million. But a lot of that it reflects on what's happened in this country. Uh, women going back to work. Uh, people don't want to be out late at night because of drunk driving laws and working. People don't want to bowl 32 weeks anymore. It's just a long commitment. So the book takes that angle of okay how what's happening in America really affects bowling. Okay, now you have the graying of America. So now the housewives leagues that used to fill the centers in the daytime now have seniors there taking Correct. their place. Absolutely. So it's that's. I was always fascinated with that when I lived it when I worked for USBC and ABC and those guys is how we used to say the demographics of America was the demographics of bowling. So, uh, examples of that are uh, uh, when the bowling centers closed in the cities, but then they seem to open up in the suburbs. That's because people were moving from city to suburb. Uh, wh uh, when you have people moving from the Rust Belt area down to the Sun Belt area, you know Florida all the way across to California. So did the bowlers follow. But again, that was a, a, a trend in American society that re bowling kind of reflected as, and a microcosm, if you will, of American society. Yeah. And then because the urban centers were smaller, usually dirtier, right. back to the bowling alley days. Correct. Now, as you move to the suburbs, you had a lot more land, and now you're getting these 32, 40, 60, 80 lane centers. And now we're bowling centers, recreation centers, family entertainment centers. And again, this reflected the American attitude of. No commitment, but I want to go out and have some fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, so that's what I always found that fascinating. Actually, where I, I sort of stole it, baseball did this a number of years ago called Baseball as America. Uh, and uh, I don't know if they came to the Tampa area, but they were in Milwaukee once uh, during the uh, play, uh, not the playoffs, during the uh, All Star game. And that was kind of their fan fest uh, theme was Bowling as America. And that always struck me as if I ever did a bowling book, I'd like to do it similar. Uh, where did, 
how did you get Edith Bunker to get on the uh, cover <laughs> of it? You know, I don't know where they got. Uh, the picture looks like if you remember the old Saturday Evening Post from years ago. Oh yeah. Uh, or the uh, some of the old nostalgia stuff. Um, that, that I think they got it from. Uh, there's a company called Getty Images that does a lot of old photos, and I think that's where they got it. But you're right. That one woman does look like Edith Bunker. It's it's uh, for those uh, for the listeners. It's like an, an old probably 50s type of picture of a family bowling, and uh, and be, I think people uh, will remember that kind of era uh, when they see it. Now, one of the products we saw last year yeah. was introduced, and now you've added a little bit of a staff with Bill Supper, Norm Duke, mm -hmm. yourself, Bowl Soul. Yeah. Uh, uh, last year, uh, a guy named Tom Mirandos out of New York called me and said, I hear you uh, you know some people in the bowling industry, and we'd like you to come on board and help us prom uh, promote this product. What it is, is uh, it's a disposable bowling shoe sole. And, w and the main audience is for people, recreation people. This is not really aimed at league bowlers or tournament bowlers. It's aimed more at people who are going to go a couple times a year to the family rec centers that you mentioned, Bill, who uh, maybe don't like the thought of wearing a rental shoe. And, 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 and there is a stigma. I mean, whether you're a germaphobic person or you just don't like the thought of putting your foot in a shoe that, no matter how many times it's been sprayed, still has been worn by other people, this is for you. And what it is, it basically is a one night's use, one time's use, uh, disposable. You pull it, you uh, pull off the uh, adhesive uh, tape, you put it on your shoe, uh, bowl shoes, and you can go bowl. And it, it, we've tested it up to, I think, 12 games, no problem. Slides like a regular bowling shoe, looks like a regular sole. And so what we say is you basically can bowl in your own shoes almost any kind of shoe even some high heels although we don't recommend it no <laughs> but uh tennis shoes uh uh, uh, uh sandals flip-flops we've had ladies bowling nose combat we actually have sold some to the military for their combat boots and basically all you gotta do is just wipe off the dirt afterward and so put us on quick change and now they glue on fairly easy so how easy it to get them back off they're actually pretty easy to get off they'll stay on very well but boy they'll come off pretty easy and there's no residue because that was one of the big questions people asked is that going to leave some stuff on my shoes and it doesn't uh, but the other th question is will it stay on enough you know it's not going to catch and we did the tests on those and it stays on you're not going to you're not you're not going to fall down on it how many games have you tried so in other words can someone buy it i got an extra pair of shoes and i bowl a few maybe a few times a year or whatever and i don't want to have to buy another one how long would that stay on and last well the, the adhesive is is strictly supposed to be for just the one day okay. it's it's one day ideally i mean i, I we know people will probably try to do it more but it, it once that once that adhe uh, you pull it off the adhesive will dry up and it's not going to stick so it's basically a one-time use but well, you can't leave it on i mean if you leave it on a pair of shoes how long will it stay on uh you know i don't even think we've tested that because we don't even want anybody to do that <laughs> so. well yeah but i was yeah no, i know what you mean but yeah Someone might want to know uh, yeah. the bowl this weekend. I think it could stay on for quite a while because well, that adhesive is good enough. As long as you don't pull it back off, you're good for quite a while. Because yeah, probably another added feature is you get a crack in the sole of your shoe. Stick this thing on for how much would it cost to the it's, what public? It's, uh, what we're recommending is a dollar, a minimum of a dollar above what a place would charge for their rental shoes. So if you normally rent shoes for three dollars, we recommend at least four. Uh, because it's a premium item. And, and like we like to say, would you as a customer, would you rather pay $3 to put your foot in a shoe someone else has worn or $4 to wear your own shoes? And we think more sp more people will say, I'll pay the extra dollar for my own shoes. Yeah, and if you're going out on a Saturday night bowling and say, I need a size 10, well, we got 8 and we got 13. Yes. Oh. And, th and this <laughs> solves some of that problem. It, it, it help, it's really helpful for the bowling centers in that respect. Uh, you, you don't have, uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, logistical stuff that it saves. You don't have all those transactions at the counter. Oh, geez, this doesn't fit. I got to take it back. Mm -hmm. and then, of course, at the end, you got to bring the shoes back. Uh, you don't have to spray them. You can keep in. They don't walk, which is kind of neat because from what we've been told, rental shoes is the number one thing that walks in a bowling alley. No. Uh, you know, because people steal them, I guess they're fashionable, so they steal them. What sizes do they come in? Well, we have three sizes, uh, large, medium, and small, which covers the whole gamut. Everywhere for the smalls will go down to kids about age six, and the larges will go up to, I think it's uh, men's 14 and women's 15. So, And then what's nice is in between, there's these little perforations on the bottom, so you can pull those off if, say, the size you get is a little too big. So we cover pretty much everywhere from age six up to about 15. So now this would be used exclusively for sale by, uh, by the bowling center as of right now yes that's our goal although we are thinking about doing some things with the consumer but as of the, the first year we've strictly wanted to go through the bowling center uh, number one to get them to realize that hopefully it's a better uh, an alternative for them and then to get them to think and then you know make their money directly uh, but yeah there's some thought to doing it with the consumer we'd still prefer to do it through the centers and the pro shops 
Yeah, because consumers would be one at a time. As Ken was bringing up the idea of, yeah, if you got an old pair of sneakers, slap it on there and you got a You're $4 ready, really? or $5 pair of bowling shoes Absolutely. instead of 40 to who yeah, knows yeah, how much. Exactly, yeah. And again, like I say, now once you get that person who's committed and, in, and into the sport, you know, you do hope they want to buy a regular pair of shoes at that point. Yeah, get, but up get them until, started. Yeah, but up until then, absolutely, we'd love to have them. So. A- another great thing about it is if it's you got bad weather or you got some water, and normally on a pair of shoes or regular shoes, if you step in that, you're kind of messed up for the rest of the day, or that bowling, you can always... Put another one on. Absolutely. Then you're set to go. Absolutely, yeah. And all we would really ask at that point is just make sure you dry off your street shoe a little bit just to make sure the adhesive sticks well. But, yeah, then you're ready to go. Now, we keep hearing of the demise of the newspaper industry. And you're writing now for a company called examiner.com? Yep, yep. Among and others, it's, uh, it's an online site, uh, and I do both the Dallas-Fort Worth and the uh, uh, national bowling columns. But I'll tell you, here's where I, I don't agree with those people who say the newspapers are starting to die. Is, uh, there's a chain of newspapers in my hometown of Flower Mound, Texas, which is about, uh, it's about 10 miles north of the Dallas-Fort Worth airport. And what they've done is they've targeted uh, uh, communities. We have four communities in our area. One has about 17,000 homes, one has uh, uh, 7,000, and two others have about 2,500 each. And what they've done is they've targeted these monthly newspapers, at the, and then they, they deliver them. They don't even get subscriptions. They just drop them off everybody's homes. And now the advertiser has a very targeted publication to that city only every month. And that's where I think everything's heading. Now, yeah, I agree with the people who say, you know, the old seven days a week, uh, every day, uh, we maybe read recently that New Orleans and some other papers are going under. But no, I think there's there's room for print. It's just going to be a little different and more targeted to a specific audience. Okay, and since you're the only interviewee that we have with the bowling writers, we just finished our convention. Uh, kind of update people on what happened at the meeting. Yeah, the biggest thing is that you know we uh, we did some soul searching with some of our uh, partner organizations, and we learned that you know maybe we need to change our ways a little bit, and maybe change our image a little bit. And the biggest thing that's going to come down from that later this year is a name change. Uh, we're throwing it out to the uh, members to make some suggestions on what they think, particularly the fact that we want to be international uh, and that we want to cover all media and all communications things, not just the traditional newspaper, which the connotation of writer to, uh, unfortunately, too many people, it seems to be just newspapers. So we're going to try and get a name that maybe covers everything that we really are and everything we need to be in the future. And we have a new president this yep. year. Yes, Joan Romeo, Joan Romeo will be our new president, and uh, she starts uh, pretty quick. So August 1st? Yeah, August 1st. So, uh, uh, and it's going to be, you know, we uh, it should be exciting because we've, we've heard the criticisms and hopefully we can take those and move forward and do some things that uh, will make everything better. Yeah, it's looking like a plan for the future. Mark, we appreciate coming on. And how about the website again? Yes, it's uh, bowlsoul.com, www.bowlsoul.com, bowlsoul.com. And we'd love to have people check out. If you're a proprietor or a pro shop in the audience, uh, you can uh, uh, purchase this directly online. And uh, if you ha- if you happen to be here at the show, we have a $25 off special that we can offer you. But otherwise, our regular price uh, on there. And uh, we'd love to have you be a part of it. And the Examiner website again? It's uh, examiner.com. Uh, if you look for the bowling part, www.examiner.com. And uh, check out bowling, and you'll find me on the national side there. And I'd uh, love to see uh, I hope you like it. I did some stuff here at the U.S. Open, and I hope everybody likes it. Fantastic. Okay. Great right, having you out. Thank Thanks you for having me, guys. Appreciate Pleasure. it.